All right, a couple of abnormalities of female anatomy. So we already talked about the hymenal variants, so cribriform, septate, or imperforate hymen. But now I want to show you what can happen if the Mullerian ducts don't fuse all the way together to form that fused uterus and upper part of the vagina. So on the next slide here, yep. Over here on the left, you see a normal uterus. Looks kind of like a sad uterus to me because the fallopian tubes are kind of sagging downward, but that's okay. All right, so that's normal. So we had a malarian duct, made the fallopian tubes on each side, malarian duct, but then the middle and lower parts of the malarian duct fused to form a single uterus and the upper part of the vagina. So what we're going to look at now is when that fusion doesn't completely occur. So this first image, you see we still have a persistent wall between where some of those Mullerian ducts were. That's called a septum, because remember, septum means a wall. Remember, we saw a septate hymen. This is a septate uterus, because it has a little wall going down the middle of it. As you can imagine, depending on how extensive that wall is that could potentially cause problems with attempts to carry a pregnancy to full term because the uterus is not as easily able to expand and accommodate a growing fetus. To the right of that, we have a bicornuate uterus. Bi meaning two. Cornu means horn. So somebody thought this looked like the uterus had two horns. Right, so here it's not just that there's a little wall, it's just that these two are still separate tubes, but then they did come together down at the bottom of the uterus and the top of the vagina. So again, this is someone who could have some difficulty with pregnancies. They might have an increased risk of miscarriage or preterm delivery because the uterus does not have as much capacity. And then the lowest image, this is called uterus didelphus. Um, and you basically end up with malarian ducts that didn't fuse at all. So here's one malarian duct here, and here's the other malarian duct here. And so usually also there is a little septum just in the upper part of the vagina that also doesn't fuse. So in individuals who have this, they basically have two half-sized uteruses, each with its own fallopian tube. They have two cervixes, and for those of you who know what a pap smear is, they need to get two pap smears, one from each side, and they usually have a little thin wall just in the upper part of the vagina, not in the lower part of the vagina. Uh, this is not terribly common, but I've definitely had some patients with it, and sometimes they don't know in advance before we do a pelvic exam that they have this, because why would you know? A lot of times people with uterus didelphus can have inner intercourse just fine, no difficulty at all. Usually one of these sides is a little bit smaller than the other. Um, and so you may not know until you do an internal exam that this person actually had failure of fusion of those malarian ducts. Pretty interesting. All right, I think that is it. Nope, sorry, almost there. A couple of reminders of other abnormalities or differences, variations in female anatomy. So we talked about hymenal variants, malarian duct variants, and then androgen insensitivity syndrome. This is just a reminder to you that there are some individuals who are XY, but who do not have the receptor for testosterone. So if you remember correctly, their body cannot see testosterone. Therefore, although they are XY, the SRY gene turns the gonads into testes, they can't see the testosterone. So the Wolfian ducts degenerate, the external genitalia becomes feminized. Now, but they did make MIS, so they also have no uterus or fallopian tubes. They will have the lower part of the vagina, however, because their external genitalia feminized. And so these individuals often don't know that they have this condition until they just don't get a period, right? They get older and older and they're still not getting a period. And then they go to get checked out and lo and behold, there's no uterus. We also have talked about congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So that's a condition when the body makes extra high testosterone levels. These are XX individuals. 
And this usually happens later in fetal life, and so the external genitalia can get masculinized. You can often end up with uh, indeterminate or kind of in-between genitalia in those folks. All right, so we went through a lot of anatomy today. I highly recommend that you take some time to practice drawing things out and labeling them. So here are our internal structures. And here are our external structures. And here's another diagram of the external genitalia with a little bit more detail. You can see they've kind of ghosted in the Skene's glands and the Bartholin's or vestibular glands as well. Here is another internal diagram, but this is a side or sagittal view. Um, it has this very interesting, I have no idea what this white dot is supposed to be. Somebody put a smarty in a strange place. I don't know what that's for, but it's otherwise a really nice diagram. Uh, this is another one showing you those internal structures again, structures again, kind of a, a anterior posterior view instead of a side view. And another diagram of the external genitalia. So hopefully these will be useful to you in learning these structures. So that's it for female anatomy.